I just finished installing successfully the SAP DSM or parser for getting logs for the enterprise threat detection, as it says here, the API. And here's the, the, the first log that I got uh, from it. So this is a remote instance of SAP, which you need to go via APIs to retrieve the logs from. And I have my system here on my lab. The SAP is on this uh, particular location. So let me actually go and show you the steps that I took to get this done. The DSM is this one, the SAP Enterprise Threat Detection. How, and notice that it's actually very recently uh, uh, published. However, if you first try to install this one, it's going to ask you for a prerequisite. And it's this one, the Curator Protocol SAP ETD Alert API, uh, also of a recent uh, publish. And then when you try to install this one, it's going to yet ask you for another prerequisite, which is this Curator Protocol Common. So obviously, the first thing for you to do will be to go to Fix Central and download and install the Curator Protocol Common. Then you install the the alert, the SAP, the SAP EDT, ETD alert, and finally the actual DSM. Three steps. If you follow them in the in that order, you'll have no problem. Now, here I have I, I run this from my terminal location, and when you install the the protocol common, the first prerequisite of that it asks you to do a full deployment. Notice, you must deploy full configuration. Not just deploy changes, but deploy for full configuration. Otherwise, you will, you will not get this successfully installed. You will have to do the deploy full configuration. So you need to go into the admin tab after you install that first adapter. Or, or you can do it after you have installed the three of them. But this one actually requires you to go here into, on the advanced and do deploy full configuration, not just deploy changes. So again, you can just go ahead, install this one. You can then proceed to install. And, and notice that here's the command in case that you've never done it. Jump dash y install and then the name of the of the file. So obviously you need to. FTP or do FileZilla to put the file into the curator box in any directory that you want and then run this jump install the second and then you get this one uh, installed and finally you install the SAP ETD adapter. Once you have installed those three go ahead and deploy a full configuration. Once you've done that you go into log sources and actually I'm going to show you what I actually did. Oh, sorry, I, let me go back and make this screen bigger and sort this by creation date. So we'll have this one over here, which is the one that you just created. Let me actually walk. It's very easy to install it. You put a log source name and I put, you know, SAP ATD API, you put a description, whatever it is. You select now from the pull down because you did all those installations, you will have this option of SAP Enterprise Threat Detection Alert. You put a log source identifier, put just whatever name because this is not going to be the IP. Uh, this is a name that you want uh, the logs to show as the log source identifier. And then put the URL of whatever that SAP system resides. And typically, it will be the IP address ended by 8002. You can put a forward slash or not. Uh, then you need to provide the user ID and the password that SAP will give you. I'm going to talk later about the pattern filter for a second. Uh, I, uh, I changed this. This parameter was five minutes, the recurrence. I made it one minute in order to get my... Uh, my events uh, come in here faster. I remove coalescent. You don't have to. 
So I want to see all the individual locks instead of having them coalesced. And uh, that's all you need to do. Once you've done that, you actually should see, you, you need to deploy changes, of course. Every time you add a, a, a DSM manually, you need to deploy the changes. And after you do that, you should see your SAP here on the status successful success but you will not have any events until you start getting those from SAP now when you log in into your SAP instance in fact I can let me actually log out so you see the whole experience you actually put your user ID and password and then you log on into your instance and um, and that alone should generate a login message like the one we just uh, saw coming now the problem you're gonna have is that if you just leave the configuration in that way you're gonna get way too many messages from SAP and you most likely would like to filter those out and for that, the way that SAP does it, you need to go into this uh, menu, into Administration, uh, Settings, and you need to define Patterns. And here you go into Pattern Filters. And you need to add a new pattern. So let's say that you give the name, I'm going to give it the name Test. Okay. Once you do that, notice that there is this filter ID. You will need to later grab that filter ID field. You actually go into test and click on their add. And here is where you need to know what type of information do you want to filter out. You, know? you make whatever selection. This really depends on your SAP instance. I don't have any knowledge of SAP to provide further guidance you know but uh, so this is these are the the filters that you need to select in order to determine what are the things that you want to uh, get uh, from your SAP system once you've done that remember you go into pattern filter you're gonna grab that uh, pattern filter identifier this one over here so you copy that one and then if you want to apply that filter you go back into log sources go into your uh, into your adapter and paste that sum of uh, pattern filters that you want by selecting here this checkbox and then paste that number in there you save it and you had made yourself you, you have been you're filtering you are determining what are the uh, messages that you want to get from, from SAP so, and going back here we have our latest uh, login uh, successful login that we just did coming here into SAP in nice uh, leaf format with all the good data. Very easy, very friendly uh, DSM to install so you can monitor your SAP environment regardless of where it is.